So we are, when, whenever we are discussing science communication or technical terminology, one important aspect with which we are not concerned is that in the Indian context, we are always referring to, by science communication or technical terminology, we are always referring either to uh, how science can be taught in schools, about the medium that we use to teach science, or how to write popular science, communicating between scientists or experts and ordinary people. But science communication strictly means the language that is used to form science and communicate between scientists. This aspect, for some reason, it doesn't come to our mind because of certain um, social linguistic factors as well as certain ideological factors. To put this in perspective, I just uh, remind you of a story from uh, British Raj period when uh, somewhere scholars from different international languages met to discuss which language is more developed and more advanced. And there were a lot of heated debates. And finally, the final summing up was done by an English speaker. He said, whatever you said about all the other languages are true. French is more romantic. Italian is more poetic, German is more philosophic, but more business is done in English. This was the summary. Actually, this brings to our notice a very important point about the context of the discussion that we are having. Which language will be selected for communicating science or as medium is not uh, determined by linguistic or social linguistic factors alone, but more by ideological factors. The Englishman's joke, more business is done in English, means that when more business is done, it is economically more sound. And when something is economically more sound, there's a power structure attached to it. This is why we are now discussing whether to teach science in Malayalam or Telugu or Tamil, but the scientists continue to use English as their language. And the reason is that the scientists in our country are not generally producers of scientific knowledge, but consumers of scientific knowledge. They consume knowledge produced in Western countries. So whether we change the language, in schools or popular science communication into Malayalam or Telugu, the prestige that is going to be associated with that Malayalam or Telugu or Tamil will not match the prestige that English has in our society and all over the world. This is a crucial aspect which we have to discuss. I feel that the question has a macro perspective and a micro perspective. Because as a student of linguistics and as a teacher of linguistics, um, I am um, you know, more uh, tempted to look at it as a linguistic problem or as a social linguistic problem. I would like to analyze the structure of uh, technical terms, see why we use Sanskrit or why we use English in certain other contexts. But if we miss the macro perspective, I think we are missing the larger picture. The linguistic take on technical terms is not going to make much of a difference to the position that English will have in constructing science for us, in conveying scientific ideas between scientists. So two points we have to bear in mind is that Ultimately, a language is going to be treated as language of science when scientific knowledge is produced in that language, not when we use science, uh, use that language to communicate science. Now, whatever we do, however well we teach science, 
through Malayalam or Telugu, it's not going to be counted as a scientific language. Our idea of equipping Indian languages, making te technical terminologies, because we have uh, for about 50 or 60 years have been talking about this, how we can equip the native languages to be vehicles of science. How can we create scientific terminology? I'll, I'll be coming to this aspect in relation to Malayalam, because one experience that we should dissect and um, examine is the experience of Tamil and Malayalam in technical terminology. They follow two very different trajectories. And I am someone personally uh, who appreciates what has been done in Tamil to a great extent. But I feel it's not a matter of linguistics or a matter of technical terminology formulation, but more of a social linguistic attitude of the speakers about our language. Of course, apart from uh, our attitudes, there is something which we call in linguistics as uh, language vitality. So how vital in linguistic terms Indian languages are? This is something which we have to discuss. When we come to Malayalam, certain policies, I will be discussing made certain policy shifts, especially from this one. But from the macro perspective, first of all, we have to recognize that uh, the generation, purpose, and also consumption of scientific knowledge is essentially based on English. No scientific knowledge is produced in English from India. The, the knowledge that we produce forms a periphery of, of like, like the center periphery relation. It doesn't enter the center of scientific knowledge. It always remains in the periphery, which means from an international background, it really has no value. It doesn't count. Second thing, the people who are not ready to divorce English from their practice, it's not students or teachers or popular science communicators, but scientists themselves. Because they depend on scientific knowledge formed in English or in Western languages. And they, they like to use Tamil or Malayalam or a native language to communicate to the non-experts. Uh, second thing, the purpose of science in India. For what purpose we are using science? This is drastically different from um, a, a Western country. Our uh, focus is not on basic science, but on using borrowed technology. We are borrowing technology from developed countries and we are applying it. So most of the scientific endeavors in India. If we take uh, the past 20 years, we see that technological institutes are growing much faster than scientific institutions and universities. Scientific research, or so-called scientific research in universities, are funded by technology or technical, technological firms, which means our agenda is controlled by, our agenda of science is controlled by certain economic forces over which um, a native language situation has no control. Our focus on borrowed technology means, with the borrowed technology, the language is also borrowed. It, it comes through the dominant language of English. It, there is no need for the scientist to translate it into um, Telugu or Kannada. So for the scientists, it's comfortable to remain with English. So when the scientist remains with English and asks others to use native languages, it means the native languages are going to have a lower level of prestige. In relation with this, there are certain aspects of ideological, political, and economic aspects of uh, development of science in India and use of science in India, which we should not lose sight of. One is, uh, it's called in Marxian theory as social and political control of science 
and its use in legitimization of power. If you look at governments, how they use science and technology to show a facade of progress and development. So ultimately, this is borrowed science and borrowed technology. Because you are, rather than developing your science in some way, even in a peripheral way, you would like to borrow technology and introduce it as a sign of um, development and in relation and in turn it helps to establish your the legitimization of power or the people in power second one the use of english as the language of science and how it is related to globalizing tendencies so uh, this is something which has been discussed so much so i don't want to go into it but english is the language of globalization so as long as you, are, you have opened your doors to globalization, then you cannot say no to English and yes to globalization. They come together as a package. Now, forgetting these, we cannot discuss science communication in native languages. Also, one important aspect which is discussed nowadays is the lack of credibility of the meta-narrative of science as the vehicle of progress. This is something that we should read in, um, um, in conjunction with what we discussed at first. The po people in power would like to project science or technology in the gap of science as, uh, uh, as the evidence of our progress. At the same time, we are now more and more questioning the meta-narrative that science is development. Now once English is Deducted from this formulation, all these power relations are going to crumble. And because of this, people are forced, or societies are forced to stick to English. Um, and also, how the social function of science is refracted, I'm actually quoting from an authority called Vidakovic. Uh, science and technology is refracted through the prism of ruling ideologies. The social function of science always comes to us as determined by the people in power at international level. So we are in a position not to change anything but to accept the science and the English that comes with it as it is. Um, this means that developing countries are forced to be in a very stable structural dependency on developed countries. You have no escape from it. Again, as I said, one component of it cannot be freed and you cannot take it. So English will be one ingredient of this. I feel that our discussion of technical terminology has to be within this broad macro perspective. There are a lot to be discussed in this, but I would, as a linguist, I'm more tempted to go to the linguistic aspects of it. But I am just reminding you of the wider perspective in this. Uh, now, uh, coming to technical terminology in Malayalam, as I said, I wouldn't like to confine to Malayalam alone, because what has been done in Tamil offers a stark contrast to, to the policies adopted in uh, Malayalam. We should begin by looking at what is a technical term? What is technical or scientific language? Is there something called uh, scientific Malayalam or scientific English? In linguistics we say yes, it is a register. So what is a register? It's just a uh, language that you use for a special purpose. But a register also derives from our ordinary spoken language. It feeds on that language. But it becomes a register by having certain types of vocabulary, certain types of um, sentence structures, and by developing these two for a special purpose. This is a register. Though we think that scientific language is more precise 
is able to express very abstract concepts unlike spoken language. Actually, the difference from a linguistic point of view is very simple. Let us look at what is called the medical English and our ordinary language. All technical terms and technical language is based on a particular distinction. For example, a doctor um, will refer to the head as cranium or cephalon. This is the technical term. So we call it as a head. The doctor can also tell you, you are going to have an operation in your head. We understand it. But the reverse is not possible. We cannot use that term. When you get angry, you will not tell a person, you will tell a person, I will break your head. You will not tell a person that I will break your cephalon or I will break your cranium. You cannot use this. It's because all languages are segregated into two types of vocabulary. One is called the core vocabulary and other is called the peripheral vocabulary. The core vocabulary is the basic of our language. This is, we understand, the doctor also understands. The peripheral vocabulary, the doctor alone understands. So it is used for communication among doctors, but basically it says the same thing. But when you know that, when you read cephalum or cranium, you know that it's technical or scientific language. So it signifies that it is technical or scientific and limits its meaning for use in a particular context. That's why it becomes scientific language. Now, the problem for Indian languages is that from where do you get the peripheral vocabulary? There is a tradition in each language for developing peripheral vocabulary. The scientific language, by and large, cannot use core vocabulary. Only when it is pressed, or only when it is forced, it uses uh, core vocabulary. If you look at English, the peripheral vocabulary comes from Latin and Greek. But this is a very long tradition, something which evolved over 400 or 500 years. But for a language like Malayalam, we try to express science maybe in a serious way only during the past 50 or 60 years. Now, our attitude towards what is peripheral vocabulary? What can I take which is different from the basic core vocabulary? This is where the contrast between Tamil and Malayalam comes in. The Tamilian is perfectly happy to take a Dravidian route. The Malayali abhors the idea of a Dravidian route. He wants a Sanskrit route. Whether you understand it or not, you are happy listening to a Sanskrit word. What happens is that, so we, we don't look at it in uh, halls of, in, in views of parochialism. It can, for Sanskrit or Malayalam or Tamil, any word borrowed, it functions in that language. But the problems are very, very different. What happens is that you have been depending on Sanskrit for such a long time, Malayalam loses its productivity. You take any word in Tamil, any technical term, in Tamil, there is an equivalent. In Malayalam, the equivalent comes from Sanskrit, but the difference is that uh, the Tamil word is understand, understandable to the masses. The students understand the concept very well. In Malayalam technical terms, the problem is that it's not that we shouldn't borrow from Sanskrit or English or anything, but when you borrow, when you use a word which has already been borrowed and already been used, like Vegam, it's a Sanskrit. We use it in science also. But when you use Pravegam, the student is not going to understand anything. It's because we, the Malayali doesn't connect this Vegam with the Vegam that you know. Or you say a word like Kshetram. So it's used in mathematics to denote a field. Kshetram, the ma normal Malayali, for the normal Malayali, it means temple. So we take those science, uh, Sanskrit terms in the hope that 
it, it will help us to define something in a very precise way. It defines it in a very precise way only for people who know Sanskrit. And even the ordinary Malayalis who are familiar with so much of Sanskrit words, the technical language is something very strange, looks like another language. The problem with going with this is at three levels. As I said, what we call as scientific language is a continuum which starts from scientists, the language that scientists use to communicate with other scientists or to write their research articles is one aspect of, one aspect of scientific language or one level of scientific language. The second one is the language that we use in schools and colleges 